Greetings friends! As the end of fall gets closer and closer, and as winter approaches, well, things are still busy here on the homestead. We still have a lot of projects going on. One of which includes, here recently we've been spreading mulch around our fruit trees in our permaculture orchard area, as well as we have been securing our greenhouse and setting up low tunnels to protect our plants from the cold temperatures. And we also have been working with some 70 tiny little babies that we received about four weeks ago. 25 of which were baby ducklings, 30 Cornish crosses, and the rest are an assortment of egg laying chickens, as well as a couple roosters in which we plan to use to breed and multiply our flocks in the year ahead. We got these birds from Murray McMurray Hatchery and they also are doing pre-orders right now for birds for 2020. So if you're looking to get some, make sure you put in your pre-orders now. But here recently, we moved out the ducklings out of the brooder just because they were monsters. They were so big, they were just dwarfing even the Cornish crosses. So I was like, they have to get out. So we moved them out here recently and now the Cornish crosses have become monstrous and it's been time to move them out too. But before we can move them out, I actually needed to build another chicken tractor. So the boys and I worked on building a new chicken tractor for our Cornish crosses. As I was doing so, I needed to gather some materials. I like to use as much of recycled materials as we can from around the homestead. So I pulled over an old duck mobile that I had, a, had in mind, I had this project in mind, and it just didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. So I kind of scrapped and abandoned that idea for that project. But anyways, I pulled it over and disassembled it and used some of the parts of it for our new chicken tractor. But the rest, I went ahead and just purchased new materials. Some of which include cedar wood, which I used to construct the frame of our chicken tractor. And the size that I like to construct our chicken tractors is five by eight. And I like that size because one, it fits the context of our homestead. I've tried to go with a bigger size before, like the Joel Salton size, and it's just too big for our property. And I have found that either five by eight or six by eight works best. And I may even do some smaller ones to go in the garden at another time. But right now, this is the size that I really, really like to use. And also with this size, I have found that it's really easy to move without having to have wheels or a dolly attached to it. So after we constructed the frame of our chicken tractor, next we wrapped it with hardware cloth. And I highly recommend using that over the chicken wire, just because the chicken wire, the quality is not as good and actually raccoons and other animals can get into it a lot easier. The hardware cloth is much, much better. After that, we added the roof and the sides. And once our chicken tractor was complete, it was time to move the broilers outside. It's graduation time for these babies. Alrighty. Time for a new home. You guys are moving on. I'm so glad we have these crate sales. They make transporting them so much easier. Yes, sir. We don't have mass care out here. <laughs> okay. There you go. Ah! Still don't have all their feathers developed quite yet, but these are Cornish crosses and it is warm. These guys are just warm to touch. But uh supposed to be 70s and the low 60s the next couple days, so they should be fine for making the adjustments while they continue to feather out. 
Are we just taking the Cornish crosses out? We're just taking the Cornish crosses out because uh, we still want the layers to uh, stand here and, and grow a little bit differently. And they're gonna go. Ha they're gonna have a different home than the, our broilers are here. See if you can get some. I'll watch you this time. Big party. Yeah. That was a dramatic one. They all have their own personality, don't they? Alrighty. I know I'm called the Fit Farmer, but I think that's about all I'm going to try lifting from here. We'll, we'll take this trip and then uh, come back and maybe get some more. We yeah. have a few more Cornish crosses than I thought we had. Did you have a count there at all? No. Oh. We get to try all, all our new doors. Got one up here, one down here, one back right there. And all of the kids are pretty comfortable with moving and working with the different animals. However, Micah's still getting used to handling some of them sometimes. You want to help out Micah? Grab it. Oh, don't be scared. You got it. Grab your fingers and under. Just hold it. You got it? Put it in. Good job. Can you do it again? I don't like the loud ones. No? You don't like that one? No. <laughs> no. Try that one. That one's a little calmer. Get your hand underneath it. They just get scared. There you go. Whoa, I'll get them. I got pooped on a few times. Lovely. So that was the first batch. And you know what? I have a knack for just getting dirty and nasty on the homestead. And this was no separate occasion because I got poop on me once again. <laughs> but hey, that's part of farm life. So we loaded up the second it? batch yes, and then brought them is. over to the chicken tractor. All right, so we got, got all the big mamas and big daddies too. <laughs> I'm sure there's a couple big daddies in there. So the only thing that's in here now is our layers and a couple of loose here too. Put those in, Sarah? Yeah. Last one. And moving on up to the grassy side. <laughs> A deluxe apartment outside. <laughs> Sailor has no idea what song guy was singing there. You don't know about that, do you, Sailor? Nope, no nope. idea. Hi. <laughs> and typically with our chicken tractors, I like to take them through our larger areas of grass and the grass pathways that we're planning to have grow amongst our trees in our permaculture orchard area as well as on the other side of these trees we have a long strip of grass where we took our broilers through just a few months ago but one of the things i'm thinking is i want to add more nutrients and more fertilizer to our garden beds and uh, what better way to do it than to actually put the, tra the tractors right here on the garden beds so you can see the chickens are here and then they have, we have the grass right in here and things that they can eat up. Oh, there's some squash there too. So as they're cleaning up this bed, getting what they need from it, they're also adding some good poop and manure to it as well and making my job easier. So after that, I can just put 
some compost or uh, some leaf mulch right on top of that and to help that stuff blend in and help fertilize our bed beds for next year so this this tractor is bigger than ideal for our garden here but i'm still running it through because you can see here it overlaps and actually our raised bed here actually has a gap in it so i had to pull a, put a block there so one of the things that i'm thinking is i'm thinking about making some garden chicken tractors that fit perfectly within the raised beds here so that might be a, that's another project to add to the list right now i'm just going to do what i can in bringing this through here and uh they only have a little bit longer here on the homestead and with meat birds you want to process them anywhere from six to nine weeks and we plan to do so so these birds right here are actually five four and a half five weeks old now so uh it's getting close and our ducklings are even closer and we're going to plan to process them at seven weeks so really need to make sure that we have all of our equipment ready to do so so let's go check on that so we have all of our processing knives right here as well as our poultry bags for the freezer and these right here are heat resistant grill gloves that I really found to be useful the last time that we processed chickens. However, I didn't actually own my own pair, I borrowed some. So when I, when I was doing that, and these are used for when you take the chickens uh, and put them into the scalding water without your hands getting burned, these come in handy big time. So I'm actually really thankful for these. And uh, thank you, Julie Subtle, for sending me a pair of these. These will definitely be put to good use. So. That's what we have there. And let's check out the order that we got from Stromberg's to see what we have there. So we actually got this order a couple of weeks ago, but we, we've just had it covered up for the meantime, just to protect it. We got a few more of these crates right here that I'm really excited about because these have been coming in handy as you've seen already. And so let's see, Lacey's here with me. Let's see what else we got in here. Let's take this plastic off. Here, take these off. And we'll Connect those together when we need them. We set them out of the way in the meantime. All right. So, right here. This is my knife from MT Knives. Excellent knife. I've actually never opened a box like this, so let's figure it out. It kind of looks like maybe you uh, bend these pieces up to get the lid off. So I'll get something to uh, bend it up. Well, this isn't the easiest thing to get into that we've ever opened. You had the right tools. Well, yeah, the right tools are always make the job easier. And then these aren't straight. It's hard to bend them up straight so they come straight through the. Oh! And a plucker. This is definitely one of the things I feel is up there as a must have tool equipment to use for processing. Uh, we've skinned them before by hand and we've also plucked by hand and that takes a lot of time. This plucker, having a plucker saves you a lot of time with processing chickens. So this should work for both the chickens and the ducks.
All right, this one should be great. I actually didn't even realize that we got the one with the wheels on it. So it's perfect. All right, so now we have our plucker in place. All right, so now we have our plucker in place as well as our gilco, our pot. We do need to get a burner for, because the burner is used for the, your propane to heat the pot up and heat the water up so you can scald them. So we need that. And we um, need pans for our um, wax to get all the feathers off the duck. So, and we, actually may need to buy like a big camp stove so you can have two pans of wax going okay yep and as well as wax we need to order some yeah. wax too so there we go we just got a few more items to get and we should be ready to go and uh i'm actually going to share the list that we'll be using of items and equipment that we will be using for what we're doing for our processing for those of you who want it, I'll be sharing that in an email in our upcoming in a, in a upcoming newsletter. So if you haven't subscribed for our newsletter, make sure you do so. The link is in the show notes below. Uh, just because I have learned through doing this that it really does help to, to have the items that you need to have. And, and you can start with the list of knowing what you need to get. And even if you just progressively get things here and there, uh, it will make a big difference. It sure does make a big difference. And the last thing to do is clean up the mess that we just made. 